Hello everyone, uh, things will start to become very interesting now. We're going to learn quickly about OWL, the web ontology language. Um, I'll try to explain all, uh, I have three slides here, that one out of three is just, it's not a version number, just that to say that this is the first slide and I have two more, so that's one out of three and then two out of three and three out, and then three out of three. Now, I'll try to explain this in one video, if it takes too long then I'll just stop and then continue a, you, uh, in another video. Now, the W3C's web ontology language, usually abbreviated as OWL or WL, just because that's easier to pronounce. It actually builds on RDFS. We learned how to use RDFS over the last few videos, how to, you know, RDF schema, how to add classes, subclasses, and how it automatically infers um, uh, which sort of uh, subjects are members of which classes, and then if you have a property, then the, the, we learned about the domain property, the um, range of a property, and how the automatic inference happens without us having to explicitly say which uh, resource is uh, sort of a member of which class, it automatically infers that, and that's a very powerful uh, feature of the semantic web in general. Now, the RDF OWL actually builds on RDFS to let us define our own ontologies now on top of RDFS on top of what we learned before but a good question is what is an ontology and the author of our book that we're using now this book here gives us a nice definition Ontol ontologies are formal definitions of vocabularies that allow you to define complex structures as well as new relationships between your vocabulary terms and between members of the classes that you define so basically if you break it, break it down they are just formal definitions of vocabularies okay so we have definitions of vocabularies and they allow us to define complex structures also, they allow us to have new relationships between our vocabulary terms and between members of the classes that we define. So basically, we can define classes, our definitions of our vocabularies, and then relationships or properties that actually link or that actually uh, uh, um, sort of tie or link our definitions or our vocabularies or our classes together. So usually ontologies they describe very specific sci domains such as maybe scientific research areas so that scientists from different institutions or from different fields or from different, from different uh, dis disciplines can more easily share data notice one thing here and please always remember this that ontologies themselves are collections of triples so the idea of RDF of RDF of having triples, of having subjects, predicates, and objects, our ontologies are nothing but collections of triples, as we, as we are going to see in the upcoming videos. Please always remember this. And the fact that they are collections of triples means that we always can run um, Sparkle queries against them and get some results, or maybe run some DL queries. Uh, I'll try to have some DL tutorial one day. I don't master it yet, but maybe I can give a very simple introduction on how to use DL queries. Um, I think actually DL stands for descriptive logic, if I can remember. But anyway, let's not worry about it at the moment, and let's continue learning about what OWL is and what can we do with it. That's the first first slide out of three. We'll move on to the next one now. Um, Without defining a large complex ontology, many semantic web developers use just a few classes and properties from OWL to add metadata to their triples. Remember this, we can use just a few classes and properties to add metadata, but you even with using a, v a very small number of classes and properties, we can infer more than that, as we learned in the previous video when we inferred um, that that um, if you remember these slides, sorry, if you remember these slides, when we inferred that um, when we use the property uh, plays uh, um, instrument, and we inferred that I'm sorry, not this one. It actually is this one here. Yes, when we inferred that, for example, when we use the property play instrument, we inferred that uh, the the domain of the property is a member of class musician, and the range 
of that oh I'm sorry the subject is a class musician of the property subject is musician and the object is vacuum cleaner you can go back to the videos please and watch them again if you haven't watched them I just need to move on with this one because this is actually very very interesting now yes so we can use a small number of class and properties and we can have a lot of information let's take an example now how much information do you think we can have about a certain resource called Cindy in an example file so let's open an example file from the book this example here and let's see what we can understand from it basically what, what, what this is about is about uh, so just some individuals uh, we're using some uh, uh, prefixes here for some URIs, RDF, RDFS, and OWL. And what we're saying here, we're giving this this uh, resource here, just a unique ID. It has property first name Richard, last name Mutt, and property called Spouse. And then the value is uh, this resource here. And then another resource, maybe another individual first name, last name, and he has a property called Patient. Another um, a resource here it has a property first name and a property last name now we have the property spouse which is this one here and then we're using from R uh, this RDF type it's of type owl symmetric property symmetric means it works both ways if A is spouse of B that means B is spouse of A that's what symmetric means the, the property works both ways in both directions uh, uh, from subject towards object or from object towards subject and then just add R RDFS comment it ad identifies someone's spouse so this here exists in this ontology here the owl itself is ontology is an owl ontology and then patient it's of type or is of class is actually a member of class property from RDF and it has we just add a comment identifies a doctor's patient and then the property doctor we have a property called doctor and this property uh, is of type you know as we said the class property and that's just a comment RDFS comment as we saw, uh, saw before but here this is quite important we are saying here or the author is saying that it has a property inverse of patient inverse so it's the opposite or the inverse of patient and this is or this property here is coming from the owl namespace or the owl ontology itself yes so what can we understand now about Cindy we only have Cindy's first name and last name and we have its ID mentioned here and here but if we try to analyze what we have here remembering that this property called um, spouse is a symmetric property it works both ways and the property doctor is inverse or the opposite of patient we can infer automatically that because spouse is actually defined as symmetric then if um, if Richard is spouse of our resource I9771 IE Cindy then that necessarily means Cindy is spouse of Richard so that's one thing that we can infer which is not uh, mentioned explicitly here in our data set the other thing that we can infer is that this resource here has patient I9771 IE Cindy and we know that uh, patient is the inverse of doctor or doctor is the inverse of patient we can understand that Cindy now is patient of this individual here so we can understand two things now which are not mentioned explicitly in our data that Cindy is spouse of Richard because the property is symmetric and we can understand that she is a patient of Craig because Craig is her I'm sorry uh, yeah because he, he has patient and she has doctor so she is a patient of Craig and Craig is a doctor of Cindy I hope this makes sense this data is not mentioned explicitly but we can infer that using the property from OWL that's how powerful it is that's how interesting and how powerful it is now we know who Cindy's spouse and doctor are even though these facts are not explicitly included in the data set why it's because 
we provided properties about these properties when we said that spouse is symmetric and patient is the inverse of doctor now the last slide quickly that uh, of all the semantic web standards owl is the key one for putting the word semantic in semantic web usually you know semantics is defined as the meaning behind words some people doubt the value of semantic web technology uh, and they did like, like to question the viability of storing all the meanings uh, of a word in a machine readable way well we don't have to store all the meanings as you saw here because we actually inferred some things automatically without explicitly having to add them yeah as we saw before we don't need to store all the meaning of a word to add value to a given data set because we can infer that automatically just an example as we as we saw before the word spouse we know it we when we declare it's actually symmetric this property is symmetric it made it possible for us to find out the identity of Cindy's husband, Cindy's spouse excuse me please even though this fact was not actually part of the data set likewise when we learned about the doctor and patient as they are inverse of one another thank you very very much indeed for watching I hope this makes sense this is quite interesting stuff um, and I, I hope this opens a door for you to understand uh, the idea behind semant the semantic web and maybe to learn more about the idea of inference and automatic reasoning thank you very much indeed for watching and i'll see you next time